Well, good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Good. You have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah. A few of you look a little heavier. A few of you guys do not. I don't know what happened, but I apologize. Your food was not good like mine was. Hope you had a great week. Cowboys killed the game. Let's go. I'm at the preach today. You guys, Cowboys fans, not in here. All right. Don't know the Lord, I guess. All right. All good. All good. Well, hey, uh, it's good to see everybody here. We are on that journey, and uh, you know, uh, two and a half year old right now. Ellis is like getting into everything and loving everything. Just yesterday, I'm proud of my girl. And she just yesterday she pulled open our shower door, smacked her toe. And I just call it kind of like, just kind of like, like kind of just a little, little shimmy shake, like, all right. And then she just walked it off. I was like, all right. A couple minutes later, she's just bleeding, <laughs> bleeding. All. I'm like, yeah, that's my girl. She ain't even phased, blood, nothing. She good. Right, we good. We good. So we in that journey. I love loving life. Brindley's uh, sleeping well. So thank you guys for your prayers. All those that didn't pray, start praying. Thank you. But uh, life is good, family's good, we are moving forward with life, and this series that we have uh, that we're in here today is all about moving forward, right? Sometimes as believers, we can find ourselves that we lose sight of the Jeremiah 29, 11 God, that it's got a future and got planned for us, right? We can get so stuck in a way of thinking or perspective that we lose sight of a God that's got a hope and a future to prosper us. And I just don't want to live that type of life. That's not my life, right? That's not the life that I believe God has for me. Because when Jesus came, John 10, 10 says that Jesus came to give life and life abundantly. And for settling for anything less than the abundant life, you're settling for something that I believe the enemy is trying to present. So for me, I'm like, let's go. Future, big things. God's moving. Let's trust God in the process. But our humanity falls short of God's glory. And then that's for us, we got to press through on that stuff, not get caught up. Uh, uh, how many of you guys ever found yourself in a place where you just feel like, man, you forget something, you get forgetful sometimes. Anybody here? You're forgetful right here. She's over here praising the Lord like all the time. She's Dory right here. Dory. <laughs> Follow the seashells. Follow the seashells. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Awesome, Dory. What's up, Dory? How you know? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. She's like, I didn't know. I wasn't going that far. I wasn't going that far. But man, I feel like sometimes just get so busy, so tied up in life. I mean, you ever been in that place where you're like, you know what? I need to do something over there. And you walk into the room and then you walk in and you're just like, I don't have any clue why I walked in this room. And you're just like staring at the room like, everything's in place. That's good. And you walk out and you're like, I'm crazy. Come on. We're crazy. Come on, somebody. We're crazy. We're losing our minds. We got a lot of stuff going on. It is crazy, right? We feel like sometimes we are losing it. We have that forgetful memory, right? We're losing it. But life can become so consuming that, man, we just, we start forgetting. And forgetting's a, a fear of mine. I'll tell you that. I mean, I, I, I don't like remembering. I was that type of person, like, uh, growing up, they're like, man, I, I didn't want to get caught, like, not remembering like how to say a word or something like that. I'm the two, you know, I'm like the, in second grade, like, don't call on me teacher. Like, I don't want to read the, 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 you know, I don't, I didn't want to do that. Like fear, right? It's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to live with that fear. I don't want to live with that fear. And I, I'm, a couple of years ago, I literally, um, I married this couple and, and they don't come to our church, but I wanted to know, like they know Jesus and stuff like that. They were a friend of my wife's and so I met with them. They loved Jesus. They loved each other, which is a good thing to get married. So I was like, cool, I'll marry you guys. And for whatever reason, I, I, I forgot their last name. So I'm like, I'm a smart guy. I'm going to go back to the email and just find, see if I can find the name based off of the email. It just turns out that it was Matthew Mendoza. And I was like, oh, sweet. The name's right here. Praise the Lord. I ain't got to ask them. Look stupid on the day of their wedding. It's all good. So I put it in there, rock and roll. So it comes to the end of the ceremony. I say, introducing for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Matthew Mendoza. Nobody moved. Nobody. <laughs> they didn't walk nowhere. They just standing there like, and the whole crowd, it went like, it's Ruiz. <laughs> True life, real life right here. For me, 
I feel about that big. That's like one of my worst fears right there, like ruin somebody's best day of their life. I was so, I mean, I was freaking out. Like, oh yeah, and Mr. and Mrs. Ray, you know, I was trying to like play it on. The interesting thing was, it's pretty cool how God works. So the gentleman had his, ma- his mom's maiden name as his last name. And the year, this year, he, uh, the year that I married him, he restored his relationship with his dad and ended up taking his dad's name on. He just didn't change his email. So you had a mama in there that was like, yeah, me toaster! <laughs> All you Ruizes, you know. <laughs> Mom was excited that I messed up. Dad's over here like, what? She paid me, I don't know me. <laughs> Taking down money, I don't know. <laughs> It's pretty interesting how God just kind of worked it out. I mean, it was the greatest fear. I'll never make that mistake again. I tell you right now, I have people that will make sure that the names are on the whole schedule. I mean, I'm, I'm like diligent now. Like, get the name completely in there. I don't want to screw up. I meet too many people, all that stuff. And, you know, we're over, you know, we're over that now. But it's pretty interesting how that moment, that fear right there, public speaking, screwing up, messing up somebody's day, which they ended up laughing about and they loved it. I mean, in the end, they loved it. They were like, oh, yeah, it was great. Um, could have paralyzed me from even speaking ever again. Be like, ah, uh, uh. and it didn't, right? And these, these fears that we have inside of life have the power to hold us back from everything God has for our future. I mean, just screwing up, failing inside of life. Sometimes there's like legitimate fears we should have, right? I mean, the baby, uh, babies cry, there should be fear with that to go rescue our children, okay? If you're a, ch- a parent and you don't respond to your child's crying, right? Like screaming, okay? There's a difference between crying, right? You have the second child. If there's no blood, they're good, right? You're good, right? If it's not bloody murder scream, you get to, you know the difference, right? It's like, ah, you're like, stop fussing. There's bloody murder. I may be life-threatening, okay? There's a difference, right? You don't respond to that. That, there's, that's a, that may be a little interesting, right? If you don't have this healthy fear that you might get let go if you don't perform well in your job, you know, that, that probably isn't good, okay? You're being flippant. The Bible says that you're not working hard for the Lord or you're working hard for your masters as unto the Lord. You might, that's not a good fear, right? There's healthy fears, though. Healthy fears of, like, not performing well in your academics that may show up in later in life with your career. These are healthy fears to have, but then there's some seriously unhealthy fears. Unhealthy fears that grip us, that hold us down, and I'll tell you, when, there, when there's a, a fear that grips us, that leads to a lack of faith. When there's a lack of faith, we are extremely vulnerable to the enemy. The enemy loves to seek who he may devour and take over somebody that is vulnerable. A vulnerable state of like, oh, I'm just so anxious and I'm so, oh, and worrying about irrational things. Right? I mean, have you ever met somebody that's like stressed out and fearful that they're going to lose their life? And you ask them, why do you think you're going to lose your life? I don't know. I just feel like I'm going to die. You're like, that's irrational. You, you, have, you should not fear. Why do you fear? God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Why are you fearing? And, and scientifically, what they say is, if you are fearing irrationally, then it permanently damages your brain. But that's where the Bible talks about casting your worries and your anxieties on him because he cares much for us. We're not meant to carry the stress. We're supposed to walk in faith. We're not supposed to fear. What do we fear? Why, why should we live in fear, man? We got to walk in faith, trusting God in the process. They say whenever you fear and it leads to action, there's a resolution. And when there's a resolution, then you can walk in peace and you move yourself from the fear. But a constant state of fear permanently damages the brain. The Bible's clear. Cast your worries and your stress on him. He cares much for us. Fear paralyzes us. Fear consumes us. But that's not an abundant life that Jesus has brought for us. Jesus gave up his life that you and I can walk in freedom, that we could walk in peace, that we would fear nothing inside of this life. That's why Jesus came. Fear has the ability, these irrational fears, to absolutely consume us and take us down. But I'll tell you, what God has called us to do is live and walk in faith towards him. Because when faith, when there's faith present, fear's got to go. 
When, when, when there's individuals that are operating in faith, fear's got to leave the room. Fear's got to go. And I'll tell you, sometimes we can get so, uh, so focused in forgetting the work that God has done that all of a sudden, because we forget, rather than trusting God, we move towards fear. But it all, it's just a mem- I mean, it's, do we remember what God has done in our past? Do we remember the work that he's done in our past? Do you remember what he's already taken you through? Do you remember what he's already restored in you? Do you remember the insecurity that you've already overcome? Not through your work, not through your effort, but because of his grace and his goodness. Do you remember what he has already done for you and done for me? And the memory of what God has done for us gives us the faith necessary to keep on moving forward. Come on. Well, I love, you go to, you go to Africa, and in, uh, in, in the lion prides, there's all different lion prides. When an alpha male walks into another alpha male's tribe, pride or whatever it is, not tribe, pride, you know what he's looking for? He's looking for scars on the other alpha male's face. Because when he sees scars on the alpha male's face, he knows this guy's got experience. And he retreats. And I'll tell you this. Revelations 12, 10, and 11 talks about the accuser. But you and I, as it says, are overcomers through the power of our testimony, the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony, right? Through the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. The blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ gave his life to take and cover all of our sin. He took the penalty of it upon the cross. Every decision we made that was out of line with the truth of God's word that is here and as a roadmap for our life, anything that we've done that's been disobedient to the truth of God's word, Jesus took that upon the cross. His blood was shed for that. But when it comes to the enemy on this earth, that's the power of our testimony. And the power of our testimony is, man, this is where I was, but man, God has restored me. Jesus Christ has saved me. He has healed me. He, I've overcome in this area of my life. And I'll tell you, this is what I want. I want to be the guy that's like, okay, the devil comes seeking who he may devour, but he's not finding me in a victim mentality. He's not finding me in a wounded mentality. I've been wounded before, but Jesus has fixed me. Jesus has healed me. And he may, there may be some scars on me. I may be tore up from the floor up, but I'd rather be tore up from the floor up than not walk through any challenges and not express any type of faith because uh, it is impossible to please God without faith, the Bible says. So when the enemy comes looking for me, he might find some scars. Oh, oh, oh he may find some scars, but he's going to start retreating because he's going to find a mature individual that realizes that in this life we face challenges. But the Savior that we serve mends wounds. That broken people need to come to a hospital, but Jesus has got the remedy to fix them. And when the enemy shows up, he's not finding somebody that's got some fake faith, some religious faith that can quote some scriptures. No, he's finding somebody that knows Jesus, has walked with Jesus, understands the work of Jesus, understands he's not just a dead God, he's an alive God that is walking us on this journey that's empowered us to overcome. And when the enemy shows up on us, he's going to start retreating. That brother's got some scars. I don't know about him. He crazy. It looks like he likes them. He likes to play around. I don't know. Right? But that's, that's what we want. We want the enemy to show up and be like, yes, we've overcome addiction. Yes, we've overcome you know, insecurity. Yes, we've overcome marriage breakdown. Yes, we've overcome pride inside of our life. Yes, we've overcome sin inside. Of, yes, Jesus has fixed the wounds. We, now we just got scars. That's what we do. That's who we are. We're not living in fear of like, I was wounded once, I'm going to get wounded again. You're going to get wounded again. That's a part of life, right? If you can't forgive, the Bible says you will not be forgiven yourself. You're going to face trials and challenges, but all that produces great things inside of your life. Embrace it. Like another challenge, praise God to get another scar. Amen. (laughs) Come on. It's the God we serve. It's the God that wants to move in our life. God wants to show up. God that wants to bless us. We don't retreat in fear. We rise up in faith. Because this is deal number one, if you want to write it down. If he's done it before, he'll do it again. If he's done it before, he'll do it again. Is that how he specifically said it? If he came through before, there we go. He would come through again. If he came through before, he'll come through again. 
He's the same God. He's here. He wants to move. He showed up in your past. He helped you overcome. He'll do it again. But the moment fear grips you, it paralyzes you. And man, a parked car can't be moved. God wants it like, okay, cool. We're in this life. We're called to greatness. We got an incredible gift in front of us. He's anointed us. He's going to equip us. We got you know, to move forward. We got to keep on going. You know what I love about the Bible is Jesus says, when I come back, there's going to be two people in the field. One of them is going to go. The other one's going to be standing there in the field. That's just Jesus is going to come back like the second coming. People are just going to be hanging out in their office like, diddle-lip, diddle-lip. whoa, where'd you go? Clothes are just going to be there. They're like, oh, I'm in heaven. It's going to be awesome. Right, but in the field. What I, what I want us to be is Pearl Street found in the field. Come on, we're not stepping back in faith, curled up in a bottle. I don't know. We may, get, we may die today. Well, you may die today. But you know what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15? Oh, death, where is your sting? What am I afraid of? What I'm going to die and I go to where? Uh, paradise? Awesome, let's do that. Right? I long to be there, but I am presently here. Paul would speak of. Why would we live in fear? We didn't, give, we didn't give ourselves our life anyways. God did in the first place. He gave it to us. He breathed life into our lungs. He cultivated us in our mother's womb, and now we're fearful. Oh, I don't know how it's going to work. Get out the womb. Get out the go. A life to be lived abundantly. God has called us. He's equipped us. Let's go. Fear can't grip us. Fear's got a grave. I tell you, sometimes in life we can lose sight of what God has done. We can be a dory, uh, forgetful to fearful. We forget, then we start fearing. What, what are you fearing? He's already come through. I love a story inside of our church of David and Kara, two individuals in our church that on the journey, in life, la vida, all that stuff, challenged life. And man, I, I, I want to tell the story, but I'm going to let them tell it. They'll tell it far better than I will. Just check out the screen. You'll hear God's goodness here on this earth to people that are desperate. My name is Kara Howe. And my name is David Howe. And we've been coming since, I've been coming since January and he's been coming since March. When I had got in trouble when I was 16, that's when I had started thinking about God. Only because um, my grandpa told me, he's like, look, you know, your biological father not the man that raised me. Your biological father is still in prison to this day. You're 16 and you're going down this path. And if you don't change, you're going to be just like that. After I had got in trouble, they had put me on house arrest. And so I was at home by myself a lot. As time went on and I was fighting my case, I started praying and praying and praying and praying. And like, God, you know, now I was walking with him, serving him. It had been about six, seven months by now. And, uh, I remember telling God, like, look, God, you know, I just, you know, give me probation or something and, and allow me just to grow in Christ out here in the world and I'll serve you for the rest of my life. When the day came, uh, February uh, 15th, 2012, um, I just remember, you know, there's a whole lot of commotion in the courtroom and all that. And the judge ended up sentencing me to 10 years in prison. And uh, man, I, at that moment, I was like, everything just kind of stopped. Like, I, everything shattered. I used to party a lot and go to the bars and um, just was in like bad relationships, um, physically, mentally, emotionally. I just wasn't proud of things that I've done or um, been involved in and stuff. And and I just kept doing those things even though I knew like they were bad for me or they weren't benefiting my life at all. When I would go out and drink and stuff, I, I thought that that would take my pain away and it wasn't. But at the same time, I was happy for that moment. And as I just start, as I continued to do it throughout the years, um, I just started feeling empty inside. Um, all that stuff, the pleasure and everything is okay for the moment. But once like time goes on, it's not, it's just not good for you. Once I started, that's when I started talking to him and just opening up to him. And I, it was just so easy to tell him everything and tell him how I felt. and what I wanted to do and how I wanted to start, but I didn't know where to start. And he just showed me the way. I didn't really have the faith to trust in God and keep on reading my Bible and keep on praying. But my mom kept steady writing me letters, writing me letters. And she was the one 
that just kind of kept pushing me, pushing me, pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. For three and a half years while I was in there, man, walking with him, building my faith, going to college, going to classes, going against the grain. And I remember getting a phone call and they were like, uh, I was at work at the time while I was in there and they're like, hey, the, the boss wants you, uh, the captain, he wants to talk to you in his office and automatically I thought I was in some kind of trouble, you know? And uh, I went in there, long story short, he was on the phone, he was like, sit down right here. He was on the phone and he goes, uh, he's like, your mom was in a fatal car accident and she didn't make it. And uh, I was like, what? I was like, are you, are you sure you're talking about my mom? You're not talking about you know, not that I wish it on anybody else, but I was like, you sure you're not talking about my aunt or, you know, like my grandma or somebody like that? He was like, Carolyn Bonilla. And I was like, yeah, that's my mom. All I could do was just kind of just, just relax and just kind of, you know, go through my season of sorrow and all that. But it was during that time that I really, really experienced God in another way. And I had, I had more comfort, more peace, and I just felt like I can be me even more. That's when God took me to, to the next level in my relationship with him. Just being me. Yeah, I'm broken. So what? I'm hurt. So what? He has grace for that. He has grace for that too. And he has grace for that. And it was at that moment, that was my like changing point where like I kind of started really understanding what being a Christian is all about. It's not all about God making all your wrongs right when you ask him to it's about you overcoming those wrongs and those mistakes and those trials and those tribulations while he's walking with you over the process of a lifetime that's what walking with god is all about but i didn't learn that till i went to you know that's the the most life-changing gem that god gave me was in the most life-changing trial that i experienced Incredible. Incredible. In the middle of a pit, in the middle of a challenge, trusting God that, man, if he's, he's done it before, he'll overcome. I can overcome in this situation. Trusting God in the process, man. I mean, unbelievable story of God's hand of faithfulness in their life as they were pressing through, uh, maybe in a season that was a little challenging for them. Unbelievable pressing in on God and just trust and say, God, we're going to trust you through the process to overcome. You know, today, David and Kara sit in this place to understand the grace of God that's been extended to him. You know, he's, you could hear him quoting off specific dates and times where certain things happen. Dates and time where he, he knows that, uh, uh, you know, something was diagnosed or uh, um, a sentence was given to him. But he'll know the day that, you know, he got the phone call. He'll know the day that whenever God began to move inside of his life. You know, the memory, the remembering of God's hand of faithfulness gives strength to the faith necessary to move forward. You can look in Joshua this, this next week as you want to. I'm going to paraphrase it, but Joshua 1 through 4, it's a moment in time where Joshua's anointed to take the children of Israel into the promised land. He's on the east side of the Jordan River about to step into the promised land. There's giants in the land. There's big cities in the land. There's big armies in the land. But Joshua from the Lord says, be courageous, be very courageous, and go. He says, I'm going to make you into a great leader, Joshua. Go grab priest, the 12 priests, grab them, bring them and tell them to pick up the Ark of the Covenant. There's a river that stands in between you, the Jordan River. It's harvest time. It's flowing like crazy. It's madness. You won't be able to get by on your own, but trust me in the process. Get the priests, grab the Ark of the Covenant, get them to put their feet in the water, and then everybody else come behind them. In the proper instruction, Joshua had to take the word of the Lord and then give instruction that everybody else followed suit. And what you find inside of this story is they picked up the Ark of the Covenant, the priest did. Once they stuck their feet into the water, the world of the unknown, the river dried up, and all the tribe of Israel walked across on dry land. But the beautiful thing inside of this story is God instructs them, grab 12 men for each of the tribes. Tell them in the middle of my miracles that I'm providing for you, grab stones off the bedrock of the Jordan River. Grab stones off of that. And I want you to carry these puppies out. I want you to make a memorial. Memorial means to remember. Take a memorial to remember what I have done for you. 
the miracle that I provided for you. So that future generations, when they ask, you'll be able to tell them this this memorial represents whenever God dried up the Jordan River and we walked across on dry land. What's God's instruction? Memorial. Do something. Grab a physical something and create a memorial that represents my faithfulness. What you are walking through right now is my miracle, but what the memorial will represent is for future generations to understand I am faithful. I am a God that can create a miracle out of anything. And parents inside of here, you're trying or your trials you're walking through, you got to grab some evidence of these trials that represents God's goodness and his faithfulness in your marriage, in your career, in your own personal struggles. So that when your kids get later down the road they're like what's up with this you're like my god is faithful your dad used to be this ain't no more god's grace has found me your mom used to be this but it ain't no more god's grace has found me and if he does it for me he'll do it for you remember he says remember remember what i have done for you god said to moses when he came down from the mount sinai Grab some pit stones, stack these puppies up as they remember it. That I am the God that brought you out of what? Slavery. When you're in the promised land with all of the blessing, it's all good in the hood. Let this monument, this memorial represent my goodness. Don't forget my goodness. Jesus Christ, I'm going to the cross. Let's grab some bread and some wine. As often as you do this, remember, as often as you do this, remember, what are you remembering? The work of Jesus Christ dying for our sins so that we can walk in the confident hope of not who we are, but who he is on the inside of us. Greater is he who is in us than is he is in the world. Why should we fear? We have everything for life and godliness. Come on, what's holding us back? What I'm saying today is maybe we need to get some fear and start putting them in the empty grave that represents Christ that's already overcome all of that, all the fear we got of what the unknown hope over our kids, career, over our academic studies, over our relationships, over our failed businesses, whatever it looks like, maybe we need to start digging that grave. Maybe we need to start, okay, we're going to put that in there and then we're going to let Jesus overcome all of that junk he's already overcome he's already overcome so in the future as we move forward and things don't look so great the enemy comes looking what is he going to find he's going to find some scars he's going to find some stones both represented of a faith-filled individual that understands God's goodness, his provision, his care, his love, his healing power, his miraculous work here on this earth. All of it is speaking to God's goodness. Come on, can we stand up to our feet today? If you're here today and you're locked in, gripped with fear. Come on, you're locked in and you're gripped with fear inside of here. Come on, let's put these in an empty grave. Let's take all the fear, all the anxiety, and put it in the empty grave. He has already overcome. We should not fear as we move forward. Keep on moving forward. Come on, if you want to throw your hands up towards heaven, God, we love you, Lord, and we thank you for your goodness, God. We don't deserve it, but Lord, your grace and your love, Father, propels you to reach us, find us, save us, redeem us, Lord. Father, I pray where fear is existed, God, the faith necessary to come into this place and expel all fear. God, I pray we're moving from fear to faith based off of the memory of what you have done. We don't forget. No, 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 Lord. We understand and we know you are a good God. And if you did it before, you'll do it again. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, God. Holy Spirit, have your way right here in our lives, in our heart here today. And God, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, every fear fades in Jesus' name. Come on, church, let's sing it out.